Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Today, we are talking about a very important topic, and that topic is mom guilt, because how do we reclaim our identity as mom as our kids are getting older and they don't constantly need us anymore? And this is a conversation that I'm very excited for because I'm kind of in the middle of it. I'm not the beginning of my journey. I'm in the middle, but I know I'm going to blink and be at the end. So. I'm looking forward to this. And with that being said, Kara Elizabeth, welcome into the podcast. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you. Oh, this is going to be so good. So before we dive in, tell us more about yourself, who you are, what you do, and who you serve. Yes, I would love to do that. Well, I appreciate being here and the invitation to be here. Um, I am what I term a body wisdom coach. I spent 15 years as a psychotherapist licensed in the state of Arizona and recently realized or recognized that it wasn't serving my community of people in the best way that I could. There were lots of missing pieces. Um, So I went back and did some somatic training. I went back and did some energy work training, some body movement training. And I really devised a program, like I said, called body wisdom coaching that allows me to encompass all aspects of ourselves in our healing journey so that we can reclaim our ourselves as women. Um, I primarily work with women um, in business and really becoming empowered to use the wisdom of their own body to drive their decisions um, and the way they run their businesses. Oh my gosh, I love that. And I love just the holistic approach and how as a society, we're starting to realize the importance of that because there are so many gaps within our traditional healthcare model. I come from a healthcare background myself and there were just so many pieces that were missing. It's like, yes, we're addressing one thing, but what about the whole person? So just know that the work you are doing is so needed, so appreciated. And oh, that's just awesome to see another woman just making such a needed impact in the world. So let's get into this, this whole identity crisis that we start to gain because it's inevitable every year that goes by, our kids don't need us quite as much. And that can be hard to navigate. Yes, absolutely. And like you said, you're in the middle of your journey, which is where I was when I really recognized how much I was living um, for my son, which isn't a bad thing. Um, And as moms, this is what we do. However, I knew at some point in this near future, he was going to leave and I had to decide what I was going to do from there. And I just recognized how wrapped up my identity was in being mom and how at some point that was going to, in its essence, go away. The neededness was going to go away as he moved off to college and then, you know, moves off into life. And he's 17 at this point. So I'm right at the cusp of the end of that. And I'm like, I, I'm so glad I've done the work to, to do this healing work and to do some more reclamation um, that I did. Yeah. I mean, I have friends that are going through this right now because they're like, oh my gosh, my, my kid's graduating like this week. What, <laughs> yeah. what do I do next? Like, because that has become their identity. So mm-hmm. how do we yeah. even start to figure out other than mom, who am I? Because like you said, we pour into our kids for 18 years and then all of a sudden, boom, they don't, they're leaving. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And and that's a, that's basically where we do start is was just asking ourselves that question of like, I am mom and I'm not, I'm not a bad mom for asking myself this question, but who else am I? Like who, what else do I enjoy doing? What do I enjoy doing for me? That isn't about caring for another person's needs. Um, how do I care for myself? So really doing some of that, that deep work of asking ourselves those questions that we've pushed aside because we felt like we didn't have the right to because we had to be a mom. Yeah, yeah. And the reality is, is that you don't have to choose. You can be and. You, it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be your one thing or another. You can have both. I vividly yes. remember I think it was a life coach once asked me, well, what do you actually do for fun? Mm-hmm. I couldn't answer that question. 
I mean, it was so eye opening when she asked me that. I was like, I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe like when they're in bed, I'll, I'll watch a movie with my husband, but that's, I, I usually fall asleep. Yeah. Sleeping's fun, right? <laughs> As a mom, yes, it kind of is fun, right? It's our release. Right. But that's, and that's a beautiful question. And I'm so glad you had that experience because that is a lot of what I talk about with the people I work um, with, the women I work with and um, in myself of like, what do I do for me? What do I do that I enjoy? That's not going to soccer games or basketball games or, or running the kid here or there. And um, it was such an eye-opening experience when my son started to drive himself and I no longer had to get up and even drive him to school. And I had all this extra time um, in the morning and in the afternoon um, to really explore what did I wanna do? Yeah, exactly. And for me, it actually took like scheduling and carving out that time on the calendar and detaching from that guilty feeling. Because mm -hmm. at first it was hard. It was like, oh my gosh, wait, what, I'm spending time away from these kids. Like I'm working, I'm doing this, I'm already spending time away. But I noticed that when I was present with my kids, I was starting to be more present. I wasn't just trying to run a business and raise my kids. It was like, okay, we can, we can do both. Let's just go in all in on both. When I'm a mom, I want to be mom fully when I'm running the business. I want to be running that fully and you can do both successfully. And I think that's just a narrative that we've gotten so wrapped up in. Yeah, absolutely. And it takes really looking into those rules. I'll call them like the mom rules and yeah. where they stem from, because they tend to be such intergenerational and just such, um, you know, we'll call it generational trauma as well as just societal trauma of like, what we learned it meant to be mom um, and how we continue to play out that role, even if it doesn't work for us, even if it doesn't fit, because I noticed the same thing too, is I had so much guilt when I was devoting time to my business, to, to growing my practice, um, to, to even being in school. I found out I was pregnant and I got into grad school the same week. So uh, like I, it, this, this journey at me started early. Like I made the decision to still go to grad school. I made the decision to still pursue my career and a lot of people didn't agree with that decision, um, but I knew that I had a goal for myself and that didn't make me a bad mom because I continued to pursue my goal for myself. And yeah. it's been great. It's allowed me to provide for my son. It's allowed me to, to support other women in such expansive ways that had I chosen not to continue to pursue my dream or to put that off until my son was older, I wouldn't be in the place that I am right now. I love that because it's so stinking hard when others are questioning that. They're like, well, why do you want that? But like you said, I agree. I think a lot of it goes back to just generational beliefs. And yeah. I think too, the generation we were brought up in, it was, it was kind of hard because our parents' generations their moms were the stay at home moms. They were the homemakers. Our moms were starting to go back into the workforce. So, yeah. you know, now we're trying to work like we don't have to parent and parent like we don't have to work. And it's mm -hmm. really created this tug of war and so many of these deep rooted feelings and narratives that we're telling ourselves, oh my gosh, I could not agree more. Yes, absolutely. And I had the the unique experience, not unique actually, but the experience where my mom was a single mom. So again, she worked long, late hours. She did courses at night to better herself and get herself in a better financial position with work and things like that. So that was my narrative. So for me, it was a no brainer to make that decision. So, and I didn't really understand why people were asking me, are you sure you want to still go to grad school? Because I was like, well, yeah, why wouldn't I? Like I can do both. Like I grew up knowing I could do both. Yes. And a lot of people I recognize didn't. Yes, exactly. And really getting clear on the, what you want, because mm -hmm. we forget this is our life. We only yeah. get one shot at it. Like, let's make it the best darn life that we can because mm -hmm. nothing is guaranteed. So knowing what you want is so key because for me, I know I was not meant to be a stay at home mom. I love my kids more than anything. I would do anything for them. But being a working mom made me a better mom versus Absolutely. I think if I was just a stay at home mom, I think I'd be resentful. But that's my perspective. That's my take. I have friends that are stay at home moms that are incredible. That is their passion, their purpose. But knowing that 
that's not my race to run. That's not how I wanted to live my life. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Once you come to the deep realization of live this life for you. Absolutely. And it's knowing that one is not better or worse than the other. We can all be in our zone of genius. We can all be where we are meant to be. And it's beautiful because when we are in that space, it gets to be so much more um, amazing for, for everybody involved. Like you said, and I feel the same way, I can be more present with my son when I'm also working. Like when I'm, when I'm at work, I'm present with work. When I'm with my son, I'm present with my son because I'm not thinking about everything else I need to do because I have things um, in that way. That's the energy I bring into that. Um, yes. And it's, and it's so powerful. And just knowing that in doing that, we're also role modeling to our children <laughs> that they can, they can still be who they want to be and do what they want to do and be good parents or, and be good partners or whatever that. And like you said before, it's not a either, or it's a both. And yes. And role modeling, the power of that is just so transformative because even with little kids, they're always watching. Yeah. They're paying yeah. attention. Even when we don't think our toddlers are paying attention, <laughs> they're watching us. They're, yes. they're noticing yeah. what we're doing. But if we can be modeling, like, guess what? You, you can do both. Mm -hmm. You can make this look however you want. That's a beautiful thing. And we're teaching them that it's okay to celebrate each other's differences instead of competing with one another, instead of being like, oh no, the only route you can do is you have to grow up and then be a stay at home mom, or no, you have to go to college. You have to work. This is what you're meant to do. No. And it's okay to change your mind. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's one thing that, um, my transition out of therapy into just coaching, um, this realm has also shown my son. Again, yes, I went to school. I had a, a very profitable, profitable business. I had a license and it wasn't working for me anymore. So I got to make a new decision. And as he starts to explore colleges and careers, um, I, I tell him that I said, follow your heart and your energy now. And if something changes later on, that's okay. Yeah. There's no, I, I don't regret my decision um, to leave my practice. I don't regret my decision to go to school or to get a license or to have a practice. Like all of that led me to where I am today. And it's, it's all just part of our journeys. Exactly. And just embracing that journey because absolutely, that's exactly where I was. You know, I had family members coming up to me when I decided to go all in on my business. They're like, well, wait a minute. You, you've worked for this many years. You have a license. You went to college. Like, why would you give that up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was making good money, but I wasn't happy. I was never seeing my kids. Yes. Like we talked about, there's so many gaps in the healthcare system. I just, it wasn't aligned with who I was anymore. Mm -hmm. And when I finally released others' expectations of me, it was beautiful because I released that guilt that came with it. And now I don't feel the guilt because I'm living life on my terms. And my kids see that. And what's cool mm -hmm. is now that they're a little older, they tell me that. You know, exactly. My, my littlest, you know, she's in first grade and she's like, Mom, I like how you're home now. We actually get to see you. You have dinner with us. Yeah, like that yeah. just like warms my heart. And it's like, okay, Absolutely. you know, I'm showing them that, all right, if you're unhappy, you can make the choice to make a change. Mm -hmm. And it's scary, but you have the power. Yeah, absolutely. And that goes back to those systemic beliefs that we grew up with, because again, I'll speak for myself, but growing up with that idea of you go to, like you said, you go to college, you get a career and you're at the career for 30, 40 years, you retire and that's your life. Right. And you're waiting, you're waiting for those week or two of vacations a year that you get and, you know, long nights and, you know, sometimes weekends and things like that. That's that old, old paradigm. And we are seeing such a huge shift and the older people are struggling with that shift. <laughs> we're in this middle ground where we're, we're in the elder population that's been a part of both generations, yeah. bo both paradigms. And we're like, oh no, this one over here is much better. What's coming up is much better, much better over here. Let's live in our joy and in our, our energy and our peace. Oh, live in our joy, our energy and a peace. What a beautiful <laughs> perspective on things because yeah, can we just stop living our lives for one week of vacation a year and start just embracing the beauty of every day. Because mm -hmm. here's the harsh reality. There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee that one day you'll be able to retire, that you'll be able to do all of the things that you put off today, tomorrow, 
live life today because you only get one chance at it. So embrace Absolutely. that journey, mamas. And oh, this was such a great conversation, Kara. Absolutely. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, me too. And again, when we can live in this now, we can be with our kids and we can right. see the days and their, their growth. And that's, that's the memories that are unforgettable. Exactly. And by having yeah. conversations like this more and more and normalizing this train of thought, mm -hmm. we do start to change the narrative. And that's powerful for future generations yeah. that we're raising. So Kara, thank you Absolutely. so much for taking Absolutely. time out of your busy schedule to pour into our listeners. Where can we get into your world and learn more? Yes, absolutely. Again, thank you. It was such a pleasure to be here. Um, you can find me most uh, most regularly on Instagram. It's Kara.Elizabeth, and I know you'll link that in the show notes as well, um, as well as on my website, which is KaraElizabeth.com. Well, that's where you can find all of my offerings for, for working with me, coaching with me one-on-one -on -one, or in group settings or even my retreats that I host as well. Oh my gosh, you guys, make sure you get into Kara's world. And again, Thank you so much for this valuable conversation. Oh, thank you so much, Amy. And until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode.